Daniel Crosslink, welcome back to yet another video. Today we're talking about dimensional accuracy and how to fix it on your 3D printer using e-steps and we're starting right now. So can you even tell the difference between these two test cubes? Honestly, I can't. On the first side, they look very similar. They look identical and there's nothing wrong with this, but once it comes to dimensional accuracy, where does it actually make a difference? So for example, if you wanna print something like this Raspberry Pi case, where the Raspberry Pi fits perfectly in the case and there's screw holes where the Raspberry Pi gets mounted, if this part isn't dimensionally accurate, those screw holes wouldn't align with the screw holes on the 3D printed part and you wouldn't be able to mount the Raspberry Pi. This is one example and I have a bigger one for you. Oh, come on. So this is my beloved AM8 printer and there is this electronics holder and there's all kind of things mounted. So there's the mainboard on this side and there's a the Raspberry Pi on the other side and MOSFETs and all these things need to be mounted to that 3D printed part. And they have to find hole distances for the screws to fix the parts. And if this 3D printed holder wouldn't be accurate in its dimensions, it would be very hard to mount all those electronic parts with the desired screw tabs. And that's why it might be important for you to have a printer that's correctly calibrated for dimensional accuracy. So as you might already know, there is something called E-steps or steps per millimeter setting that influences the dimensional accuracy of your prints. For each axis of your printer, so with the X, Y and Z axis, and also for the extruder motor, there is a setting in your firmware that determines how many E-steps have to be done on a stepper motor for that desired axis to move that axis by one millimeter in any direction. For the extruder motor, that is the same. It just means that the extruder motor has to transport filament and the E-step setting for the extruder motor means how many E-steps does the motor need to do to move the filament by one millimeter. Another factor could be the material that you're using, be it PLA, ABS, or anything else. Different materials and even different manufacturers behave a little bit different at different temperatures. So there's all kinds of variables that could play into a dimensional accuracy of a part. I'm doing another video about how to calibrate your extruder motor to have the correct values for extruding the right amount of filament. I'm gonna link that video up here in the corner once it's ready. So to do the actual E-step calibration, the first thing that you need to do, of course, is print a test cube. And the test cube I'm using is from Chuck from the channel. The test cube usually is 20 by 20 by 20 millimeter in size in any dimension. This I've linked down in the description for your reference so you can download it and print it on your printer. But before you do the actual test print, please make sure that you have done the following things. First of all, you should have done a bed leveling recently. So make sure that this is really done correctly and accurately. Another thing to watch out for is that you don't squeeze the first layer of filament to the print bed too much. Sometimes we do this because if you're printing on a mirror glass, for example, sometimes we press that nozzle a little bit more to the surface. So the first layer gets squeezed to the surface and it has a better stickiness, but this is counterproductive for this kind of calibration. So make sure that you either use a different surface so you don't need to press the filament against it and we get a more accurate print. Then another thing to check is how high is your first layer. The default settings for the Ender 3 Incura, for example, set the first layer to 0.3 millimeters. But if you are a little bit more into that, the so-called magic number for the Ender 3 is a multiplicator for the layer heights that is actually 0.04. So the stepper motor for the Z-axis is actually just able to position the Z-axis at 0.04 millimeter increments. And that means if you're setting the first layer to 0.3, it's not a multiple of 0.04. What I would do is go to 0.2 millimeters for the first layer. The last thing to consider is don't crank up the bed temperature to anything higher than 50 degrees. If it's possible, don't use a heated bed at all for this kind of calibration if you can make the first layer stick well enough. For this little print, it should actually be possible to print without a heated bed. And then when you've checked all those things, then just go and print the first test cube. 
Once the test cube is printed, you want to measure every side of the cube with a digital caliper. So how to do that correctly is you look at the cube and you make sure that the Z is actually on top. And then, for example, you're looking at the X side and then you're measuring the left and the right side of that X. So you're putting the caliper so the X is in between and then you read the values. Same for the Y axis, you just turn it so you look on the Y uh, and then the Z is still on the top and then you measure the left and the right side of that Y and then for the Z axis you just measure um, between the actual Z and the bottom of the part so you got those correct values. So now since you have measured all the sides of your test cube, what's the next step? To make the final calculation of the E-steps values easy for you, I've created an Excel spreadsheet that I've also linked in the description of this video for you to download. And let's have a look at that spreadsheet for a moment, how that works. So you have to enter the measured dimensions in these three columns here. So let's say you measured for the X side 20.21, and for the Y, you measured something like 20.15. And for the Z, you might measure something like 19.95. So if you now look at the spreadsheet here, it is not yet able to calculate the new E-step values because it needs the current E-step values as an input parameter. So how do we get those input values? You need to be able to run G-code commands on your 3D printer and you can do it in different ways. You can connect your 3D printer using a USB cable to your computer and use something like Pronterface, for example. And I am using Octoprint for this. So if I open my Octoprint for the AM8, I can go to the terminal tab and run any kind of G-code command. And if I run the M503 command, that's going to give me the current EEPROM values. And one of those lines is the M92 line, where it says steps per unit. And you can read those values and take them as the initial values to your Excel spreadsheet. It can be completely different values from mine, so don't take my values, it's completely uh, dependent on the printer that you're using. So let's take those initial values here, 89.52 for X, and put them in the spreadsheet, 99.26 for Y, and for Z we use the value that's written here. So once you enter those original E-step values here in line number eight, you will see that in line number 14, you will get the new E-step values that you will have to set to your printer to compensate for the dimensional inaccuracy that you just measured on the test cube. So how do we save those new values back to the printer? That is done back here in the terminal or in Pronterface, any kind of interface that you're using. You need to run a M92 command and then for every axis you give it the new value. So for example for the X axis we have a value of 97.5. So I'm going to enter 97.5 and for the y-axis it's 98.52 and for the z-axis it's 394.28. And then you hit enter, send the command to the printer, so we need to scroll down. It says, okay, this is the command that I've received. Okay, it has been saved. Last thing to do here is to save those new values to the EEPROM. Because if you turn off the printer now, it will lose those new values. It's not going to save them in the EEPROM. They are just in the memory. So we run an M500 command to finally store those values. And you see that is the result settings stored. So after saving those values to the printer, next step is really to print another test cube and to measure the dimensions of that test cube once more. So the Excel spreadsheet makes the second round very easy because it takes the values that it just calculated for the new values that you've just set to your printer. It puts them again in another section here as the new starting values. So the only thing that you need to do here is to enter the next set of measured values. So you see it's gonna propose a little bit different values to set to the printer. And if you actually have already a 20 by 20 by 20 millimeter cube from the first round, you're actually lucky. 
I do it mostly two times and enter those new ESTEP values and a final round to the printer. And then if you would do a third test print, which I think is not necessary, this would be probably pretty accurate, but you can do it multiple times. So I would say two times is enough for most part. So this was the X, Y, and Z ESTEP calibration. In the next video, I will show you how to do an ESTEP calibration of your extruder motor so it always extracts the right amount of filament. Until then, I wish you a good week. See you next time. Bye-bye.